the most fundamental piece of Active Roles are the access templates. Everything that Active Roles does in terms of security, in terms of management, is done through access templates. So with Active Roles, let's go over a little bit how that works. The most important thing to keep in mind when dealing with access templates is that they're a zero-stop model. That means that you natively get no rights to anything in Active Roles. Unlike the security model in Active Directory, where you get a whole bunch of rights by just having a user account or maybe even anonymously, any user can log into Active Roles, they'll just get no rights, they'll have no ability to see anything. So with Active Roles, we need to go through and actually give them rights to do something. Let's take a quick look at that. Here, we're going to take a look at, the, at a couple of what we call access templates. What an access template is, is like a bucket of rights. And it's the bucket of rights we actually use to grant rights to something over something. And we'll get into that in a second. But let's take a look at this one. In my fictitious company here, I have two levels of help desk users. I have a level one set and a level two set. If I open up the access template for level one, what you can see here is that I've given it a whole lot of permissions. You can see I've given it things like the ability to list the domain and list managed units. We'll get into those later, containers and organizational units. It's important again, like I mentioned, that users cannot even enumerate the domain structure or the OU structure without explicitly granting them that right. So one of the things you want to give kind of at the core most of the time is the ability to enumerate the basic structure of AD. In addition to that, we've done things like giving them the right to read all properties of the user object here, reset a password. Uh, this is also required to write the last password set, list group membership. Things like that, basic uh, fundamental things in order to do administration of users. In addition to that, we've done something called nesting. What nesting does is this gives us the ability to take other access templates and nest those sets of rights in this particular one. So here, for example, I've given the right to deprovision users. That's now part of this template, even though it's a different template. Unlock accounts, uh, add and remove users from groups, things like that. These particular templates are built-in access templates inside of active roles. So just for the say, just so you can see, here we have a whole bunch of templates and that are built in. Here's some for computer objects and domains, groups, all the way down to users. And you can see there are a bunch of basic fundamental building blocks of how you would give out different, uh, different rights in active roles. In order to make it easier to look at, we've gone and created our own. So again, this is the Help Desk Level 1 template that we looked at. So this is kind of a conglomeration of some of the built-in templates as well as some templates that uh, are some pieces that I've created in addition to that. And that's how I built one. So my second level Help Desk users probably have, will have all the same rights that the Level 1 users have. But in addition to that, I want to give them more. So what you can see here is that I've nested, oops, I've nested the Help Desk Level 1 template here inside the Help Desk Level 2 template. I've also given them the right to undo deprovision, which is Active Role's fancy way of saying, take a terminated employee and undo it in case HR makes a mistake or something like that and you want to do it. I don't want my first line people to do that because it's potentially dangerous and maybe they could get talked into it by someone on the phone and we don't want that to happen. So we only want to give our second line people that right. What's great about this nesting is that if I have, if I make a change to the Help Desk Level 1 template later, then I can, all those changes will apply to the Level 2 template as well. Now, the last thing we want to take a look at is what happens with that template or bucket of rights. If we take a look here, what you can see is that I've linked these, and these are ones that I've already done. So what, if you take a look here on the left, you'll see that I've linked it to a group called Help Desk. I've linked the template name called template-helpdesk level 1, which is the one we just looked at. And I've linked it over my groups OU, my users OU, and my employees OU. So effectively what that means is I've taken, I've taken everybody who's in my Help Desk group, granted them that access template over objects in those three different OUs. Simple, easy to work with, easy to understand, easy to figure out what's actually happening in those individual areas. And what's great about this is I can modify these anytime I want. With the built-in rights in Active Directory natively, 
if I were to have to re-delegate those rights, it's a whole process of removing the rights and re-adding the rights and going back through and making changes to them. With active roles, I can just change the template and anywhere where that template's applied, those rights will change.